All right, y'all. First of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for being a part of this thing. If you're on the screen, um, you obviously have been a part of two things. One, you've been a part of really, really caring for, for Haiti and our friends there for a long time. You've been a part of building Help One Now and being a part of like, literally everyone on the screen has helped build this organization. Um, we talk often in Help One Now about the circle of empowerment. And this is one of those moments, and it's been a while. We don't get to do this as much as we used to. Thankfully, we're getting back to it. But it's one of those special moments where we gather around a virtual table. And um, our local partners are here. Um, um, our incredible donors and supporters and advocates are here and the Help One Now team. And we're all here together. And it literally takes all three of us um, working together to make this happen. And so... Usually we get to spend a lot more time together on trips and on live events. And we know for a couple of years, we weren't able to do that. Now that's coming back. And it's been so fun to see everyone um, kind of in the field and at events and whatnot again. But this is really just a really special moment and also kind of a heartbreaking moment. I was reflecting this morning a little bit on Haiti and just the complexity of Haiti. We're, we're really here to let John and John Leakes know that um, as they navigate one of the most complicated global issues, um, that they're not doing that alone. Part of, the, of Help One Now's, you know, foundation is we believe in the power of friendship. And um, we believe in the power of friendship because when you're in the darkest moments, typically it's your friends that are going to walk with you to help you walk through those dark moments. We don't know what the future holds. Uh, we, we can't fix everything today. Um, but we do know we can be here and we can kind of hold each other's hands virtually and um, pray and um, hear from our amazing friends and and partners and leaders. Um, and, and really even, you know, like sometimes when you're alone, you just like, what can I do? Like to, you know, if you're a typical American or maybe a type A personality like me, I'm like, how do I fix this? And I recognize I can't fix it, um, but it doesn't mean we can't create progress. And so I remember 20, 2008, Pastor John, um, 2007, I met a starving kid at a gas station. You all have heard the story so many times. I kind of launched this whole initiative um, to figure out how to, to, to help people around the world. Um, one of the things we really believed in is the power of local leaders. Um, when you hear the leaders on the screen, you recognize quickly they're the smartest humans in the room, and they do just incredible amount of work, and, and we can support the work that they're doing. That's the mission of Help One Now. Um, and I remember um, in 2009, I was really, really frustrated. The very end of 2009, uh, and I, I was talking to my friend Aaron and um, and Bush at a uh, Stephen Bush at a um, at a coffee shop called Thunderbird in in Austin, and I was like, it's really really difficult. It's 08, so economics were obviously not great in the world. And like I was like, how do I get people to go to Zimbabwe to see the work? And my buddy, um, my buddy just said, why don't you come to Haiti with us? And so um, that'd be we know a bunch of great people. We can do this together, and um, we kind of made a decision for me to go to Haiti and kind of see the work of Haiti, not knowing, I mean, I think within like six weeks, the earthquake happened in Haiti. And so um, some of you got connected literally through this whole initiative. We began to sell t-shirts and we got on the news. We began to throw garage show for orphan parties and, and raise money for people in Haiti that we had no, we've never met. I had never visited yet. Um, and when we raised, I think it was 50, $60,000 um, just through all these different initiatives, we just sent it to two or three organizations. And one was um, Pastor John Leakes' organization, um, his uh, kind of original organization, his partnership um, group in, in Belton, Texas. And so eventually we, ma we made a decision to go visit Haiti. And it was just a few months post-earthquake. And when you're in Haiti post-earthquake, you're thinking like, it's never going to get worse than this. And here we are thinking, man, <laughs> it's worse. And yet here we are. Once again, letting John and John Leakes and all the people we support. Know that we're gonna to continue to stick with them even in the worst of times. When I look back at the last 14 years since that earthquake, um, many of us, Stephanie, you know, just all the trips we all took together, we begin to see the light of Haiti, the hope, the progress. Um, kids 
who were starving, getting food, um, schools being built, um, houses being built and families moving in the houses. Um, you saw all these really beautiful, amazing moments, churches being launched, um, all this impact. And um, you're you're here thinking this is going to be a forever moment where Haiti can can make progress. And so this morning, as I was praying, I think the thing that I heard is sometimes you don't see what you want to see, but oftentimes obedience is more important than anything else in life. And so one of the things that we're letting everyone on the screen know is part of our love for Haiti, our calling to Haiti, our friendship with the people of Haiti, is we're going to be obedient to do whatever we can to love and serve the people of Haiti. And thankfully, we're doing that. There's so much good going on in what we're doing together in Haiti um, in the midst of all the crazy reports and the wild kind of things that are happening there. We know there's all, there's so much good happening. So what we wanted to do today, and I'll pass it off to Lamar, is we wanted you guys to hear from John and Pastor John Leakes. Um, and we wanted you to hear from one another as well, just to know that there's a mutual um, group of people that care. And um, hopefully when we walk away today, um, we won't know how to fix everything, um, but there'll be this connection and camaraderie um, that will give us strength and hope as we um, stick with our partners in Haiti. So Lamar, I'll pass it to you. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, everyone, thank you so much for being here. Uh, man, it's it's incredible to see um, your faces and your names. Uh, a, a couple of housekeeping things. Everybody's pretty good at Zoom these days, and you're already doing this. So, you know, stay, stay muted unless you're talking. Uh, also, over in the chat, um, if you have questions, like as we're going, um, I want to encourage you all to uh, on the on the drop down little thing there in the chat, click on help one now. Uh, that's actually Brennan. Uh, Brennan is our host today and and just type your question there and we'll try to get to questions at the end. Um, but if you if things pop in your head as as you're listening, uh, feel free to jump in there and send that straight to the help one now um, option there in that drop down. So uh, what we want to do, you know, as as we're thinking through, uh, many of you probably are, are hearing from other people like, oh, you know, it's it's Haiti is back in the news. It's on everyone's radar, although it's it everything that we see happening has been happening for a while. It's just you get to these moments where you have a more acute situation uh, that really just compounds things because, um, you know, if those many of you on this call know the history of Haiti, so you know there's been uh, vulnerability and, 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 you know, many, uh, people outside of Haiti largely responsible for that for, I mean, 220 years now. Um, but as Chris was saying, you know, we, we've had these beautiful moments, but right now it's, it's a, a very dangerous place. And I think for all of us, it's really hard to even wrap our minds around that because none of us, uh, I would venture to say none of us other than Jean Leaks and John, and perhaps some of our global partners have been in any sort of situation that's even close to this. Um, and so it, it, it can be hard until, and then you begin seeing images and videos as, as we've been seeing over the last few weeks. And um, it still can seem just, man, what, what is it life like, like for a normal person in, in Haiti right now? And so um, I would love to start um, John Mondesir, uh, many of you know John, and if you know John, you love John. Uh, that's a given. And um, you know, John, you're you're you have a family. Um, you live in, in the Port-au-Prince area. You're a father. Um, what what is life like for you every day? What what sort of you know weight are you carrying right now? Can you just kind of give us a a little bit of a snapshot of that? Yes, thank you, Lamar, and thank you, everyone, for your listening. Um, my name is John. I don't know if you hear me well. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my name is John. Um, I work for Help One Now since 2011, since when I had black hair, and now my hair black turned to gray hair, which means I spent a lot of years with Help One Now. And it's a blessing for me just to work alongside with you guys. 
um, because we've made a lot of progress. We've made a lot of impact together. So unfortunately, there are faces that I've seen for seven years do the situation right now and Haiti is facing. Most of you can make it down here and Haiti to serve as you usually did before. So the first thing that I'd like to say, imagine yourself as someone we're living in Haiti, gunshot is your morning alarm, which means in Haiti right now, um, we are facing a hard time where gangs only have the control of the country. The national force, which is the local force in Haiti, have no power in front of the gangs. When the gangs say they are going to do this, they, they will make it, they never lie. Um, it's very, very complicated. We are in extremely difficulties because there is no school for 15 days, airport shutdowns, hospital have no oxygen, people dying in hospital because there's no doctors can make it downtown to work at the hospitals. Um, this is for the reason why I can say so. It's very critical in Haiti right now. Um, it's not a secret for none of you guys, um, specifically for those who are following social medias. Um, you guys heard about everything that's happening in Haiti right now. Um, we have a lot of kidnappings. We have a lot of misery. People are very desperate because there is no food, no clean water, no gas, which is fuel. There's no fuel. There's no circulations. I can say Haiti is cops, if I can use that word. The reason why all the country is functioning out about like 24 and 7. And Haiti right now, when it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the country closed. No supermarket open, no gas station open. Everybody is trying just to make it home because they know after 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon, what can happen to them. So it's very, very difficult for me and sometimes um, I can hide you the truth, guys. I used to ask to my yeah, to ask to myself, if God closed his eyes on Haiti. So it's not only me. We pray all the time, we struggle all the time, and things are getting more complicated. Things are getting worse than ever. It's the first time on my 24 years old. I leave these situations. Probably Pastor Jalix, he born before me. He know about baby doc. I didn't know about um, this government, but now it's the first time ever that I leave what I'm living right now. So everybody, one thing that happening is gunshot. So the biggest problem that we have right now in Haiti is just because the largest prison on the National Penitentiary is broken, where all the wicked men get arrested, they put in. All right now, they are really, and nobody doesn't really know what will be happening ahead. And one thing that makes me really scared is just because the gang leaders, the announcement that I did do right now is they say, if Haiti cannot be a paradise for them, it's not going to be a paradise for anyone else. If Haiti can be a hell for them, it will be a help for everybody else, which means all the Haitian right now who live in Haiti, we are in the same basket. The fact is, as you guys heard about that, um, the airport, the national airport that we have, it's shut down. Even though you had a visa, even though you have money, there is no way you can make it because the airport shut down for 15 days it can be more than that, but I remember it's 15 days, about two weeks. Um, the only thing right now the U.S. government is trying to do is trying to evacuate the U.S. citizen by shorter flight. Um, they are going to make that in Capetian, uh, which is the second largest city in Haiti. It's a little bit more safer than Port-au-Prince. Um, it should be started yesterday, but I don't know if they get it started. Um, because we got a lot of demonstration down here. 
And one of the biggest concerns that we have again is according to World Food Program, they say that there will be a lot of people going to die because of famine, because we have no food. Um, the last time, um, the biggest thing that the gangs have done is they went to the biggest port, which is CPS, Caribbean Port and Service. They loot everything that they had inside. Um, they just loot the port and get all the stuff just to use for themselves. They don't care about anybody else. So it's very, very complicated for me as a young dad. You know, there's no way I can make it outside. And price of everything in the head is very high. And one thing again is the bank, many of the banks are looted for those who are still giving service. When you want to try to go to the bank, you have to take a big line over 500 people on the line. And they start from eight in the morning to one o'clock, which is not provided enough service. You can spend all the time in the big line. You can find out the service that you're searching, which means the situation that we are facing in Haiti is critical. Um, I don't think there is hope. I don't know, guys. I'm so sorry to let you know that. I don't think there is hope because if the national part force that we have in Haiti cannot stand in front of the gangs, which is the illegal force, there is no answer. Um, right now, I think it's yesterday, um, the gangs were trying to take control of where Pastor John Alex is living over the hill. And they are shooting on people, killing people, rob people things, and they do whatever they want to do. Like I said, it's just because that the legal force is very weak in front of them. Yeah. Um, the gunman, yes. Would you say something, Lamar? No, no, no. I was just, yeah, I was just agreeing with you. But I wonder, I wonder if we can jump over to you mentioned that things are kind of spreading into even up the mountain where Jean Alix is. I wonder, uh, Jean Alix, if we can, um, you know, I know, I know you have everyone on on this call knows you, and and you have. Uh, uh, a lot going on all the time in Haiti, uh, from church planting to uh, boys and girls' homes and schools and uh, business and agriculture and and really just involved in all the different arenas of life. Uh, yeah, we'd love to hear from you and and just you know what what the situation is for you and your and personally. I know you're separated from your family right now. Uh, what the situation is with with your ministry. And, and Haiti at large. All right, hey, um, hello everybody. So I hope that you all are doing really, really well. So, uh, well, I mean, for me, uh, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. And when I say that I'm doing good, which means like everybody in Haiti, you know, I, I, I am impacted with what's going on in Haiti. You guys, I think you already know that uh, for the last two years, they have been trying to kidnap me or kill me, anything. So, but anyway, God, uh, by the help of God, so I'm, I'm here. And I believe uh, God will always protect me and the ministry and the thing that we are doing. So for the ministry, I mean, uh, everything is doing good. Like I said, all of us who have been impacted but at the same time, um, we are doing we are doing good with the ministry. So um, the children home, the boys home, and the girls home, or the village, you know, sometimes what it is difficult is to really get some food. And basically, what's happened? We always trying to get a lot of food and place for the for for the for the our children. So, but. Um, so last December, we make sure that we have food from, I mean, January to March. So we always do that. So make sure that we have enough food. But right now, where we are right now, it's very difficult because, um, especially here in Petronville area, 
So for our boys in school in Marotier and Guibert. So um, we didn't have time to buy everything that was needed. And, and, and we were trying to do our best because we, we didn't know if thing was going to be like that. But we buy a lot of food and I think we should be, in, uh, we should be okay for our school. And, um, but there's a few things right now that we need for the boys home. And it's really, really difficult. It's really difficult. Um, so, and, and the truck that we have, we have a Isuzu truck. And yesterday morning, the security guy at Gibe called it, they said they steal the batteries. So um, they take the batteries from the truck, which means it will be very difficult right now. Not only here in, in Petronville or in, in Paul Prince, there's a lot of food you cannot get, rice or sugar. I mean, everything, it's very, difficult to get right now and they are very very expensive um, but we will try our best to see how we can get them and i think we should be able somehow to get it um, you know so but um so the church and the school are doing okay the boys home are doing okay even though the situation is very difficult for for them but we are they are able right now especially in our school and the boys home to feed the, them to so this, the most of the school in Port Prince area are closed, but our school, Gibert and Marucci are still open. So this is, again, this is a blessing because uh, I think it's because of where, of where we are located. We are, I mean, you know, guys, where we are in Kenscroft area. So, and it's for the people and so the people really in that, in that area keep everything going on, the school, so, which is also good for the teachers, so they can still have a, I mean, a job or things to do. So, we we thank God for that. So, but at Agape, Agape, it's 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 more difficult because um, we are, I mean, everywhere that from in Paul Prince area, there is games going on. So, most of our people that that uh, uh, come to Agape. So they live in places like Jean, like John. Um, so he lives very, he's like in the borderline with the gangs <laughs> where John lives. So, and he's not the only one that live in that same situation. We have a lot of people that live in this, in that same situation. Some people that live there, they cannot even come to church for a long time because there is no way. Some people, they have to go back in the, countryside of Haiti, wherever they can get a refuge. Or oh, some other people, they have to leave the country. If they can go to the DR, they, if they already, probably some of them, a lot of, lot of them already, they have to go to the DR. Some go to Chile, some go to Nicaragua, some go to Brazil, and some go to the US with the, in Haiti we call, them the, we call it the Biden program. So, and the Agape Church is really affected by, by by that because we have a lot of people and you know they're trying to to leave and they i mean some a lot of them already live so we have a lot of people that used to be at agape church now right now they are in in the u.s so our even our staff at agape are very affected uh, by that but at the same time we are building the community center at agape so and um, so even the situation is very difficult by God's grace, we keep building God, keep God provide for everything. And we have favor, we have favor of God because where we are building that uh, community center, you know, you used to have a games and things like that. But now the people really take, I will say like, it, they say, this is our, our thing. So they will not, no one come to bother us. So, which is really, really good. So we pray and things like that. So, um, um, and, and so we can, we can still keep building in the middle of that situations. Actually, we start to do it two years ago. And then right now we, I, the, what I ask God is like, he help us to begin it. He will help us to finish it somehow. So if I, I don't know how he will do it, but I know he will do it. So we still have church at Agape every weekend and, and most of the times uh, we open our office at Agape yesterday because of what going on in, 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 
pèlerin, une petite ville pèlerin, uh, Thomas Saint Labour, and things like that. So we had to close our doors, our office. But uh, today we start to open. Yesterday we have to, I um, mean, call the people from Espoir Vivant and tell them, hey, you should, you don't, don't, don't take any risks, don't come because yesterday in Pétionville, inside of Pétionville, they killed 24 people. 24 people, just a, like a group of gang come and kill people for nothing, you know. But at the same time, I don't know, guys, if you hear about that, but they, they go to the bank, there's a bank in Nabu, so they go and then they break in the bank, they take everything and go. So most of the bank in, uh, in Paul Prince, all the bank in Paul Prince area are closed. We're talking, uh, we're talking Paul Prince, we're talking Taba, we're talking Quadabuque, and some of their malls, you know, so all those, those banks, they are closed. So it's only in Petronville that you have a few banks that are open. So that put us in very difficult situations with uh, uh, trying people to have money and to buy things. So not only they cannot um, go to the bank because banks are closed, but at the same time, it will be very difficult for, for them to do that. So um, in, in, in Ferrier or Douin, Douin is like, it's, it's, it's okay inside of Douin. I have to say that it's okay inside of Douin, which means there is nothing, so we open, we never close, we never miss one day and things like that. So everything is okay there um, inside of Douin. So again, we thank God for it. But in Ferrier, I mean, but in Douin, it's, it's difficult. I cannot send, I, we usually, we used to do send, send truck and then a lot of things there. We cannot do that because there's no one that can leave for a place to go to to Duane right now. But inside of of Duane, everything is fine. So our school is open. The church is doing okay. Um, Ferrier, it's uh, you know at the beginning of the year we have a um, I think we the, the school was closed for about one one year one month and then but now it's open. And what we did it's like we. We have a meeting with all the other school in that area. We have a meeting with all the leaders in in the community. We say, hey, this is what's going on. I mean, we understand there's some problem in Haiti, but we don't have to finish the children. The children have to go to school and things like that. So basically, everybody say, hey, uh, yeah, it's it's very important. We cannot, we have to open our school. So the people help us. And then so the school have been open since then. And so, and we are doing good. But the good thing is because in our school, we feed them things like that so even in that difficult situation because we are able to feed the kids and then the teachers can still have a job and things like that so that help people in the community and that help us also to keep doing what we we have been uh, doing so for food in and the at the at the orphanage at the village at the school at, at the school it's difficult to get because and if the border is closed, it will be very difficult to go to cafe Asians because of fuel, there's no fuel there. And just to let you know, also there's no fuel in Poplin. So it's very expensive. You know, you have to buy one gallon and things like that. But but we have been trying to work with people who have businesses in one of it. And, and I think uh, we will have food um, by the end of this week for another three months. Again, it's make sure that we make sure that we have food for the school for three months, which means April, June, and July. And um, and make sure that we feed the kids and, and everybody will go with the well. So and what all, all our, I mean, uh, operation are doing good, uh, except when we have a problems and things like that, we pray and we ask God, to show us how to deal with, with, with that problem. And usually God always, like I said, give us favor and everything. Like I, because we know a lot of people, if we, have no, if, if we have food, there's a way we can find some, for some reason. So we thank God for that. Okay, guys. Pastor, I have a quick question for you. Yeah. Are you, <clears throat> is there any concern or how big is the concern that what is happening in Port-au-Prince, Patientville, is going to go out to Duin and Ferrier? Do you feel like, I know you don't know, but do you feel like most of the um, kind of chaos and extreme violence will stay in the city? Or are you worried about the entire country being swallowed up by it eventually? Um, I mean, yes. I mean, that can happen. I mean, if if nothing, if there is nothing, if, if things don't change, yes, the violence that you see in Port-au-Prince can easily easily go to the other part of Haiti. 
very easily. What's happened when people don't have hope and things like that. So, I mean, they can do anything. When people are dying for food, I mean, there's nothing that can stop them from doing a lot of things. So, um, I know that. And I tell, I tell my pastors and people that I know, I say, I know, I tell them, I mean, I know what's going on in Paul Prince area, but you guys, if, I mean, you are okay now, but pray, pray that God will solve that problem very soon because you don't know what, I don't want to see what I see in Paul Prince to see in another part of it. Yeah, I mean, I, guys, I can tell you that there's not, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Like John said, um, me, uh, I'm 57 years old. It's the first time that I see that, that what's going on. And I never, I will never imagine that I will ever have to see something like that in my whole life. Wow. Pastor, uh, you, you talked a lot about Haiti and a lot about the ministry. Um, can you, can you tell us how you are, what your situation is right now? personally well i mean i'm doing good i'm doing okay um so as you guys know my family is in the u.s and Lori, my daughter is going to get married so my prayer it's uh, it's for me to be able to to go to the u.s and be at her wedding so mm -hmm. this is uh right now i'm sad praying about it because see what's going on here i cannot leave it's not really <laughs> It's not good. So I want to go in and to be part of it. Uh, and But Milan, my wife, she's doing okay. Actually, right now, she's in Turkey. <laughs> she's in a mm -hmm. women conference in Turkey, so which is good. But for my business, um, I mean, Mark is doing good. He, he is in, he is in uh, Tempo, Texas. And, and yeah, so he's doing good too. But uh, for my business, uh, we are not doing really, really well. I mean, there's a couple of things uh, in my business. I don't know if Probably you guys don't know that, but I did um, buy a building next to the U.S. Embassy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but I buy, I, wait, I must finish to buy, to, to pay for everything. Um, and then I have goods inside of it that worth a lot of money. So the building is worth a lot of money. And then the thing that I have been signing is worth a lot of money. But for the last two years, I cannot even go and sign it. I mean, and the reason I choose the U.S. Embassy because I think it will be the last place <laughs> for someone to go. So it's, it's, it's not good. So which means business is not good. But in Petronville area, um, uh, we have, I have my, my business and picture of it to be, uh, it's in the same situation. As you guys see in the news, if you have a business anywhere, if the gangs go, they will lock everything, take over everything, put fire over everything. So right now, they already do that in Tabar, Quadebuque, Delmas, you know, Paul Prince and things like that. So right now, the only place it's left is Petronville. And now they want to come to Petronville. So we, we have a couple of things that uh, I have things that I pay for two months right now. I cannot get it, like rice or sugar and things like that. It's very difficult to get. I mean, well, that's not very difficult. Impossible, like right now, because I told you that the port, open spot have been closed for some times right now. So, so in that uh, situation, my business is not doing uh, good at all. And so right now we are thinking if we're going to, I mean, like, uh, uh, how you say that? Like, let some people go and things like that, it is, which is very difficult yeah. to do because you know those people, they don't have nothing. I mean, how are they going to take care of their family? These people that have been with us, work with us for a long time. So we feel sorry for them, you know. But, uh, yeah, the situation is really, it's really bad. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I, I know many of you have carved out uh, time in your workday for this. So we want to respect that. So we're, we're actually going to shift now and uh, we're going to ask, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brennan, but we're going to ask Pastor John uh, in Zimbabwe to pray. Um, but also, if you don't need to jump off the call, you don't, you know, you're you're welcome. You stay as long as you want. We can ask some questions after this, but I do want to go ahead and make sure that we pray uh, before some of you have to jump off. So, uh, Pastor John, is your can can we hear you? Is your connection good? Uh, you're muted right now, Pastor. Uh, 
You're muted, Pastor. So now we now we know where Lamar learned the mute scenario. Lamar is usually muted when he talks as well, and Pastor John must have taught him very very well. Why don't Why don't we do this, Pastor John? If you pop on, um, that's oh here he goes. There you go. Okay, <laughs> all right. Yes, I will. I will pray. Um, just to thank, uh, Pastor for updating us of the situation in Haiti. Thank you for giving us that information. From my end, we only see from the media and usually CNN, Cable News Network, and obviously it can be very negative. Um, whilst it is real negative, but we have a God who is bigger. I want us to pray now. Lord Jesus, we thank you for our brothers and sisters in Haiti. Thank you that you know them and you know them by name and you know their struggles and you know what they're facing. You know the fears in their hearts. You know what could also happen to them. But Lord, you also make a promise to protect your own. And this is what we are praying for, for our brother and for his family and for the other family, Christian families, in Haiti. Right now, all we need, Lord, is your favor. We know we don't deserve it, but you can protect our brothers and sisters in Haiti. And also, Lord, make a way. Like he is saying, for two years, he has not been able to go near where he has invested. Lord, will you know all the ways that could work out for him? So, Lord, we are really pleading with you, not only for him, but even for us as we know we are related and we are together in this. Lord, we want to pray for your mercy, for your grace, for your understanding, so that we, even in our support for him, we support him wholeheartedly. We are thankful that nothing escapes your attention. Even the little bit of that fear that comes through, the little bit of that threat that comes through, the little bit of that feeling of hunger, because there isn't enough food. Lord, you know all those things. Nothing escapes your attention. For this very reason, we are pleading with you. Come to our aid. You have made these kind of promises before, and you have, you have also protected people in difficult times such as this. Lord, you can do this for Haiti, and you can do this for our brothers and sisters in there. They are your own for your name's sake, so that they will, your name will not be in any way ridiculed. Lord, we pray that you protect this, your, our brothers and sisters. As we pray this, we are thankful again. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor, thank you for that beautiful prayer. Um, Pastor John Leakes and John, just know that um, we love you. We're praying for you. Um, for those who want to hang out, um, you can definitely stay on. We know many of you may need to go just because of, of, of life commitments. And um, just know that the best thing that we can do for Haiti, obviously, is pray. Let our friends know that we care for them. And, you know, just your partnership and generosity is keeping places like Duin and Ferrier and even places in, in, in Port-au-Prince um, up and running as best as possible in this current moment. So just know it's, it's going to feel easy to want to do something else, and maybe God will have you do that, but also just know that you already are doing something that matters and that's significant, and that's just standing with in prayer and generosity um, in this current time, and at this, um, God's sovereign, and we'll just pray that God will bring breakthroughs, um, but just know that um, we'll continue to stay in communication and hope community church that are in here as well. They help launch Agape. Yep. Um, we have a lot of people communicating to John Leakes and to John um, each and every day, and we'll try and keep everyone in the loop as much as possible. And so we're thankful for you all. Um, we know the world has, has many dark scenarios happening and the only way that we can continue to fight the darkness is to, is to pray and to give and to believe, um, that eventually, um, as we suffer on this side of earth, that there's going to be an eternal side where there'll be no more suffering. And so we can't fix everything today, um, but we know we're living a life that's based on eternity 
And um, each and every day we'll get up and we'll do whatever we can to bring heaven on earth as best as we can today. Um, but we also know that someday we will be in heaven together and we will no longer see the pain and suffering and and, and the heartbreak that we're all experiencing now. So um, thank you all for being here. For those who have to go, um, I love you guys. And for those who want to stay, um, this is kind of your moment to, to interact with John and, and John Leakes and ask any questions you may um, need to ask.